Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Interactive Immersive HQ. I am Lake Heckeman and I'm a new media artist. I work a lot with Touch Designer and Interactive Installations. And I'm here today to talk about uh, interactive particles in Touch Designer and really more about interactive art in Touch Designer and how we can set up some projects to have a lot of different types of interactions uh, really easily. So as you can see here, I'm obviously interacting with this uh, via moving around in the video texture, but I can also use my mouse to move around and interact. And if I reach over here, I have a LiDAR set up that I can also use to interact. And so all of this is kind of all going on at the same time. And it's really easy to do that because of the way that I have this project nice and modularly designed. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that uh, but first, we're going to the flower, because I do not want to be big up there the whole time. Um, so, welcome, and we're going to talk about interactive art in Touch Designer today, like I said. Uh, so first, I'm going to start with just taking you through what's going on in this project, and instead of rebuilding everything from scratch, kind of telling you where you can learn some more about it, and focusing more on the high-level um, architecture and paradigm that I use uh, when building these projects. So first things first, uh, I have my interactions set up. Uh, here's the panel interaction where I can have a viewer open and just kind of draw in the panel. So if I open a viewer and I have my viewer over here, you know, I can draw and interact with that and we can see that if I pause the texture for a second, very clearly. So that's happening here. And then I have my LiDAR texture set up here, which has a lot going on. And you can learn all about this uh, setup in my LiDAR tutorial on YouTube. It's free for everybody. Um, it's pretty recent, so you can go check it out there. I'm not going to talk more about it, but I do have it hooked up right now. And so I'm using my hand, I'm leaning over and touching my, my screen that I have set up. And you can see that that's really nicely working with our same kind of interactivity. This is just going into an add uh, comp here. And because I'm working in texture space, all of my interactions are kind of nicely integrated into one big kind of texture based uh, pipeline. And what that means is that not only can I use, like I have the panel interaction here, I have my LiDAR interaction, we already saw the webcam based interaction, right? And there's many other ways that we could use this paradigm, uh, which I'll get into in a second. But first I will uh, unlock this. So this flower comp is just the flower video. Um, then in my interactive particles, uh, if you want to learn more about these interactive particles, I have a mastering uh, GLSL for Touch Designer course out on YouTube uh, that everybody can go and check out, and the project files are all available on my Patreon. Um, this particle system and the technique I used to build it are available there, so you can go check out that course and actually just get the skills to build this for yourself. Um, with that said, I'm taking in a video, I'm performing an optical flow analysis, on that video and using it as the basis for my texture. And separately, I'm using a jump flood algorithm from David Braun to take in my interaction, which is my, see here, is my panel interaction or my LiDAR interaction. And if I would decide to do something like use my NVIDIA background remover um, or actually just like a threshold, a threshold on my face, see? Um, I could just add this to my interaction as well. And now all of a sudden, I have this other layer of interaction that's also going on all at the same time. Um, 
And of course, if you either stop the texture or just turn off kind of that optical flow uh, input, then your motion is doing all of the, the particle emission, which is pretty cool. Um, so that is my network that I have set up for this. And as you might have noticed, there's a couple things that are structurally helpful about the project. And you can tell, uh, or I guess one of the reasons uh, that it is helpful to have the project set up, as I'm about to explain, is because as you could see, I was just going through and modifying this um, pretty quickly in real time. That's because everything is very modular, which means I know in this component, my panel interaction is occurring and I have my parameters to here change and make this a bigger interaction. And on my LiDAR component, I similarly have um, parameters to change things and make them different. And so I can really work with things pretty abstracted. I don't need to worry too much about the code, what's going on inside of these components after I have it worked out. Um, I can work with them as kind of units and that allows me to build conceptually into a bigger, uh, more complex project and keep everything very straight and organized. There's also workflow benefits, uh, including externalization and uh, using Git and things like that, but that is a, a separate topic, so I'm not gonna get too much into it. Um, and then I have the particle system component, which really has the meat of everything. And in my particles, you know, there's parameters that control everything important and uh, interesting about the particle system. And so through that, we can do things like turn off the optical flow weight but leave on um, a lot of the interaction so that we can uh, get this back and interact again with our mouse in the same way. Uh, and just as easily bring this radius back down. And so that's one, I think, very important uh, takeaway is using components and parameterizing everything uh, wherever possible because then you can also, uh, if you have a nice master resolution parameter, very quickly change this to something that is a very different resolution and everything still just works perfectly. And I think that's pretty powerful because, well, there's a lot of times where you might have an installation, an interactive art piece, and you deploy it one day they have a configuration and the next day that configuration changes whether it's an led wall that's uh, being a little bit built as they're going along on a big stage or if you're deploying a new venue on a short timeline um, this ability to really quickly change a lot of things um, quickly but with a lot of power and control is very helpful so um one of the things that I like to do is anytime I have an interaction, I'll have maybe, you know, two, three, four of them per project. I will set them up uh, as many times as I can to work in this texture format where I'm really just concatenating a bunch of these textures together and thinking about them as not individual units so much as one layer. There are times when different layers need different treatments and that is okay. Um, but I think this is a good general approach and it served me pretty well in the past. So I'm excited to be able to share it with everyone today. A couple ways that you can kind of take an interaction like this and work with it, um, specifically with particles, but really with any, any type of interactive artwork. Um, a couple things uh, that I like to do are one, Use an optical flow, uh, like we've talked about already. And this is, of course, the optical flow running on that um, flower video. Optical flow is great because it gives um, a slope that's based on the motion of the image, which can generate a very cool effect. It doesn't necessarily have to be the image, though. Um, for example, if I, uh, instead of running the image through the optical flow, ran my... Uh, interaction layer, my interaction layer being uh, you know, my panel, my LiDAR, everything added together. Make this back to full screen. Um, now all of a sudden, whoa, it's going crazy. And that's because 
Now I'm getting this optical flow based on my input, uh, my interaction layer. And so this is a very powerful thing. Uh, let me zoom out again. This is a very powerful thing. <laughs> it's very powerful as you can see. I might need to turn that down a little bit. And so now this is pretty cool because uh, it has the flower moving and that's not a problem. Uh, but then we get these really beautiful particles that are emitted quite organically from our motion. And then, you know, we could take it not over the flower. And then all of a sudden, oops, uh, and then all of a sudden, we have particles uh, that are being emitted out of thin air and the colors are just being drawn from this beautiful image. And then I can do that with my, my LiDAR layer as well. And this is pretty cool and pretty compelling. And, you know, pretty vastly different actually from what I had at the, on screen at the very beginning, which was also vastly different from most of what we've been looking at as far as using the flower as the background with the optical flow emission. Um, and so that's a good illustration of the versatility of this kind of effect. One other thing um, that's also on display here is this David Braun jump flood algorithm. So a jump flood algorithm is basically like a SDF and it'll be a little bit more clear if there's uh, some additional dots. So you can see it's kind of over here showing a distance calculation similar to an SDF or a Voronoi calculation uh, based on the input points. And so that's what a jump flood algorithm is. There's a bunch of different ways to use it and I prefer it in this manner, uh, which is really just using it as a pretty simple and locally scoped sloping calculation, which I then apply an actual slope to. And that is, uh, that is what generates the particles from the interaction in that way. And then the thing that I would be, uh, I guess, remiss to leave without really talking about is how to potentially use noise to play with a lot of this. And so one way that you can do that would be to, let's say, to grab this input. Uh, we'll take a noise. We'll output uh, just the noise this time. We'll make sure it's not monochrome. 32-bit float. I've already got this handy speed here, but you can uh, just drop a speed of your own use this transform so now we have a nice moving little noise here i'll turn up the harmonics quite a bit and we'll slow it down a little uh, now what if i use this for my external force switch the uh, offset down to zero and now all of a sudden i have something very interesting again and so by playing with the different parameters, you can affect a lot of different things. And again, we could always take the background off. And start to play with uh, the parameters of this noise texture a lot. Uh, so there are really many, many ways that you can take these systems. And that's one of the beauties of Touch Designer and working with interactive art in Touch Designer. So, I think I'm going to replace this with my optical flow. Replace this over. And wrap things up. With closing remarks that are, once again, uh, the things to take away. Use components, use parameters. Uh, have a master resolution somewhere in your file that you can run everything off of so that you can reset your configuration for other displays like a new LED screen or something like that very easily. Uh, important when working with interactive art in Touch Designer. And um, to the degree possible, 
have your different functions uh, modularized and clearly delineated and also annotated to keep everything straight as you work with more inputs and things that get more layered. And so that's enough for today. Uh, my name is again, Lake Heckeman. Thank you for joining. As I said, you can find the LiDAR on my uh, YouTube tutorial for LiDAR in Touch Designer 2025. That was pretty recently released. And you can get the skills required to create this particle system through my Mastering GLSL 101 uh, course, which is also on YouTube. And the project files are, are available on my Patreon. So appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for following along on the HQ. They're doing good stuff. And until next time, happy creating. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.